Welcome back, YouTube. Today we're discussing the big win that SpaceX just had with NASA's awarding it a contract and another private company awarding it a contract to land a NASA rover on the moon. What the implications of this are, how important it is for SpaceX, how important it is for going to the moon, how important it is for going to Mars, how important it is for Jeff Bezos' ego, how important it is for all the old school companies used to milking the government for money and all of NASA's stated programs for launching people to the moon and other places in the solar system. Let's get going. This is going to be a very, very important episode. <laughs> So, first things first, what happened? NASA awarded $2.9 billion to send people to the moon. Now, if you thinking this is important, it is. But the way it was done and what it signifies is even more important. So NASA had originally pre-selected three companies eligible to bid for a moon lander. One was Dynetics, from Alabama. One was Blue Origin as part of a consortium called the National Team with Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Draper. And the other one was SpaceX. Now, let me explain what the actual program is. Artemis is a program of sending humans back to the moon. It is going to be on paper using a SLS rocket, which is a rocket that would cost more than a billion dollars per launch, not reusable, just you use it and you throw it away. On top of that rocket, there would be a capsule called the Orion capsule. That capsule will send astronauts to orbit the moon. From there, they're going to connect with a previously sent moon lander that's already orbiting the moon they will connect that capsule to the lander the astronauts will transfer to the lander and then they will use that lander to land on the moon and that lander will also take them off the moon and send them back to moon's orbit and that whole thing is going to cost billions of dollars and what spacex won was for spacex to be the moon lander NASA is proposing to use a capsule that is the size of a car stuffed with astronauts, send them from Earth to the orbit of the moon. From there, they're gonna, so they would be stuffed in that tiny little thing for about a week, let's say. From there, they will dock with the Starship, which is bigger than a 747, and use that Starship to land on the moon. Now, if this doesn't make sense to you, it's because it doesn't make any sense. But what they just announced is, is that this is what they will do. Now, what I just told you is kind of complex. So I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to break down first why NASA chose only SpaceX. Until now, it was expected that out of the three companies that NASA would choose, they will select at least two. It was expected it will be Blue Origin and SpaceX. Well, Blue Origin didn't make the cut. According to the Washington Post, which is solely owned by Jeff Bezos, which the Washington Post is the newspaper that broke the news, SpaceX's bid was much, much smaller than all the other companies. So SpaceX basically undercut the competition by a lot. NASA has actually seen what SpaceX is doing with Starship. They've seen it fly. They haven't seen it land successfully yet, but they've seen it fly. That's not nothing you can say about any of the other projects offered by the other competitors. They've seen the progress that SpaceX is making, and they've seen the cost that SpaceX is suggesting for NASA. They have also worked with SpaceX in the past, and they know that when SpaceX tells them something is going to cost $2 billion, they know it's going to be at least in that range. It's going to be around $2 billion. Where what they know of other companies is if another company tells them it's going to cost $5 billion, it is very, very likely 
it will end up costing 12 to 15 billion dollars i will do a video on the whole sls program and their timis program but basically if you need to know what's going on everything is triple the price at the very least of what was originally expected with spacex they have actual history knowing that spacex is not going to overcharge them it's going to mostly run on time and it's going to deliver a product that nasa asked for in fact what spacex is offering nasa is a lot more than what nasa asked for they're offering them cargo and volume that was basically unthinkable to be offered by the other companies in that um, process they were just offering astronauts with tiny amounts of cargo and nothing that to, to show or prove historically that they could do that, that they've done that, or that they're even working on it. They're, they're asking for money first, and after that, they will ask you for three times that amount, and hopefully you get what you asked for. SpaceX is the exact opposite. They're the cheapest, they offer you more than what you ask for, and they've actually already seen progress on their program and the 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 good part about it is this program is not only designed for nasa so spacex starship is a multi-planetary transportation system it doesn't care if it flies to earth to mars to the moon or to any moon that you've ever heard of like europa and so on it just is ready to fly anywhere in the solar system it has a system of refueling in space where your range basically becomes somewhat unlimited and the only constraint you have is how much time does a mission take so you have so many more options going with starship than with a moon lander it kind of is logical that nasa chose them what is not is that it's very surprising that NASA decided not to give money to any of the other government leaching companies. This is something that hasn't happened before, and it's a big, big turning page for basically the US government, specifically NASA, in choosing something that works, it's cheap and inexpensive, instead of just giving money to insiders. So Elon Musk gave an interview in 2019 to CNN Business stating that the whole Starship program would cost two to three billion dollars. What NASA just did, they gave them 2.9 billion dollars for one Starship to go and land on the moon, while the whole program where SpaceX is expecting to make hundreds of those ships would cost just as much. That's according to Elon Musk's calculations. Let's say he's off by a factor of two. So instead of two to three billion dollars, it costs six billion dollars. Still, NASA just paid for half of that. So the dream of Elon Musk of having a Mars colony just became much, much more realistic. SpaceX became from one of the highest risk businesses in general, having a space business where you have extremely high risks associated with costs, associated with timelines, even with technology and just basically physical capability of doing something to one of the least riskiest business. So on one side you have Starship program, the rocket program, which is currently used by NASA, a whole bunch of governments for sending satellites. And on the other side you have Starlink. Now the Falcon 9 program has been essentially paid off. The research and development on it is done. There is no more development. It keeps working. It keeps getting new customers. It keeps making money. On the other side, you have Starship. Starship was the big question mark. Can SpaceX finance a project of this magnitude? And by NASA going in and saying, we're gonna pay for at least half of that, it became much, much less risky. On the other side, you have the Starlink business, which just this week raised another 1.9 billion from private investors, a business that is already generating small amounts of money from its small base of users. It has already raised about $4 billion just for that business. It has scheduled to build a factory in Austin, Texas. It has projected its 
sales by 2024 to be 30 billion dollars a, a year essentially paying for all the research and development so out of one of the highest risk businesses you could choose to get into which is launching rockets in space elon musk has effectively made an extremely unrisky company in space something that hasn't existed until now and it gives them so much leverage to go and try out new things to even push further with development of the starship program much more tests hiring more people starting to develop the actual systems that they would need on mars and on the moon it's just crazy good news and at the same time another company that has won a contract from nasa to launch a rover on the moon's south pole announced that it will use falcon heavy to send that rover to the moon so spacex so far has monopoly on landing to the moon by all appearances it seems it will have a monopoly on landing to mars and so far it's the biggest player in satellites by far in the world on earth kind of like becoming a small solar monopoly let's see what this does to the competition the competition is basically a pig with a lipstick the pig is the old school players lockheed martin northrop grumman draper those are companies that have leached the government out of billions of dollars for their space programs for their rockets for their a whole bunch of ultra expensive things that are not used for anything productive but just basically to have more cost overruns to get more and more money out of the government and the lipstick in this case as ugly as that sounds is jeff bezos he has created what they called a national team to use blue origin together with those old school companies to create that lander they asked for much more money than spacex and all of them got a big slap in the face and if you will a kick in the butt what they got is a message that says no more leeching if you want us to give you any money first of all we need to see that whatever you're developing does not have only one customer us the u.s government and nasa if you want to develop something start testing it start sending it to space let's see that it works and that you have some use for it other than leeching the government off of money and then if it's competitive with what we have already in that case spacex we will give you money even if it's not the most competitive we'll give you money just so we have more than one option so far none of those companies have done that the the closest one of those companies is blue origin which has created a rocket that has flown extremely high twice as high as an airplane has ever flown and if you didn't get the joke please i'm letting you know now that was a joke start laughing the biggest achievement of blue origin for the last 20 years since its existence is to send a tiny rocket by comparison 100 kilometers from earth which for those of you who don't know is 60 miles something that most of us will drive for less than an hour he sent it a few times to that height and brought it back this is all that blue origin for 20 years of existence has done and, and the other thing that blue origin has done is develop an engine which is going to be used by the european space agency and ariane group for launching their rockets which are even at current prices more expensive than the old falcon 9s that spacex is using right now they're more expensive they're not expendable and they don't even consider starship as something that is on their horizon this is like a dream of theirs that they haven't even thought about because they can't even compete with falcon 9 so this is the achievement of jeff bezos for 20 years selling a billion dollars worth of stock every year to fund blue origin the other companies are lockheed martin and northrop grumman these are the old school leechers all the way back from the second world war they know how to leech the government they know how to suck money out of it they know how to make production delays they know how to make production overruns and just get a whole bunch of bonuses and they just got a big big slap in the face and a kick in the butt telling them no more on to my next speculation mode the artemis program and the sls program this is a program that is a dead man walking 
The SLS rocket, if it ever flies, will have no more than one or two flights ever. The government has already spent more than $10 billion on that program, and it will write them off, just like it writes stimulus checks, will forget about it, and will start using reusable rockets. This is just the first salvo in announcing this. There will be no point in using the SLS to, to go on a tiny capsule, fly for a week, and get to a big ship that could have done that for you anyway. The doctor hasn't come into the room, hasn't taken the pose, and hasn't found out that it's dead. But it is dead. The Artemis is no more, in my opinion. It's just we're waiting on the doctor to arrive. And it was just shot by NASA. What you will see is people going to the moon on starships. If Blue Origin actually wants to be a space company instead of a government leeching company, they will start working really hard, really fast on their new Glenn rocket that on paper is supposed to be very competitive with spaceship, at least for Earth orbit destinations. It will be completely reusable. It will even use the same fuel as Starship. Therefore, that's what Blue Origin should do and is their only chance of doing. Currently, they're trying to sell people to space. But let me tell you what their definition of space is. You fly 100 kilometers, you spend there 10 minutes, and then you go back down. And they will be charging millions of dollars for that. It's not going to have customers, especially if Starship starts flying to, to the moon, starts sending people around the moon, which we already have people who have paid money for that. We have people who have paid money to SpaceX to go and spend days on the International Space Station. And it would cost basically the same as spending 10, 10 minutes in low Earth orbit in microgravity. People with money are not stupid people. They're not going to waste it on that. They're not going to spend millions of dollars just to spend 10 minutes in space where they can spend the same amount of money to spend a few days in the International Space Station or spend a little bit more to go around the moon. It's just not happening. We know Jeff Bezos has huge ego. Having his own newspaper deliver those news, it must have made him grow hair again. It's something horrible to his ego. Hopefully, he uses that as a positive so we can have another competitor to SpaceX on US soil because there will be other competitors that will come from Europe, maybe 10 years from now, but they will come from China, from Russia. It would be good to have another one in the US. My last video became somewhat of a success for me. I crossed the 100 subscriber mark, which I want to thank everybody for. It, had, it means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for this. If you like my videos, hit the like. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe and you can see a whole bunch more of my videos. And until next time, thank you and have a great day.